Hello and welcome to Tacoma Ocean Fest's crocheted barnacle tutorial. My name is Kelly and today we are going to be walking through how to make one of these barnacles. Um, you'll notice these are all different sizes and shapes. What we are doing today is called freeform crochet. So we won't be following a pattern. I'm going to be teaching you a couple basic stitches. We'll learn a chain stitch, a single crochet, how to increase and decrease and how to do a slip stitch for crocheting in the round. So, let's get started. And this is an example of the one that I'm gonna make today. So what you'll need is a skein of yarn, wool or other natural fibers, a crochet hook. You want to make sure that the crochet hook you're using is appropriate for the weight of yarn that you're using. This is a worsted weight wool and I'm using a size H, US size H crochet hook. You also need a pair of scissors and a bobby pin for marking your stitches. So let's begin. We're going to start by creating a loop to crochet in. So you'll take your yarn and we are going to make a little loop here. So I'm wrapping my two fingers, twisting, and pulling through to make a little, a slippy knot here. Um, my hook will go in my dominant hand and I will use my non-dominant hand to hold the yarn. The way that I'm gonna hold the yarn is I'm gonna put it between my index finger and my middle finger. And then I'm going to pinch that knot, which is the base of the stitch that I'm starting with. And I'm gonna lift my finger up and down to increase tension. So as I lift my finger up, my yarn is gonna be really tight. That's gonna give me a tighter stitch. And then if I move my finger down, you can see this yarn is a little bit looser and that's gonna give me a looser stitch. Um, I am also using these fingers to hold my excess yarn there for a little bit more tension, a little bit more control on that tension. Um, so you, can experiment with that to see how loose or tight you want your stitches to be. I think in general, a good middle ground, not too loose and not too tight would be helpful uh, for this project. So we're gonna begin just with a simple chain stitch. So you've created your loop, you've put your hook through the loop. You are going to take your hook and cross it behind. So bring it between the yarn and your hand. You're gonna cross behind and you're gonna hook the yarn underneath and then do a quarter turn towards your body to pull it through that loop. And that is a, a chain one. So that's a chain stitch, that's one chain stitch. We're gonna go ahead and do six chain stitches here. So we've got one, that's two, three, four, And I'm using that tension with these fingers pulling down. You can also move your fingers up and pull, which I'll do in a second, but to create six stitches, and you can see each stitch looks like a triangle and they're all kind of equal length. So that's our goal. All right, we're gonna turn now and create our first row of single crochets. So go ahead and bring your index finger and your thumb up to pinch right at the base of that stitch. You're gonna chain one, which will be the basis of the next row. Then you're gonna find this next stitch after that. You're gonna take your hook in and it's also gonna be, the one that you're gonna go in is gonna be six from the bottom. So if you wanna count, you could count one, two, three, four, five, six. So I know I'm gonna go in this row here. I'm gonna hook under and then a single crochet goes like this. I yarn over, so my hook goes behind the yarn. I slip it through, so I have two loops on my crochet hook, and then I'm going to yarn over and slip it through those two, and that is one single crochet stitch. I'm gonna go into the next one, um, from the front to the back, yarn over, got two loops on my hook, and then I'm gonna yarn over and pull it through both. So in my head, if I get in my rhythm, I go one and two. That helps just to remind myself to pull it through twice. We'll go all the way across with this single crochet stitch. And I apologize if you can hear my children in the background. 
All right. And then you get to that last one there. You know, single crochet. And your work will now have traveled over towards your dominant hand and your hook will be will end at your non dominant hand. So now we're going to turn our work and we're going to do another row of single crochet. This time, instead of hooking through the top of the stitch, we're going to hook in between the posts. So if you look at the structure of this crochet that you just created, you can see these triangular stitches here along the edge. And then if you spread it here, you'll notice that there are little holes in between the posts of each stitch. So right there is one. And that's what we're going to be stitching into on this next row. So we're going to take our work, we're going to flip it towards our non-dominant hand, making sure that our working yarn is behind our needle. We've started a new row, so we need to remember to crochet, or to chain, to crochet chain, <laughs> to chain stitch one. Okay, And then again, we're going to go six from the end. So if you want to count one, two, three, four, five, six, that's the one we're going into. You can also look and see it's the next stitch here. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to go in that hole in between the posts. You'll notice the whole stitch is now on top of my hook. I've got that whole triangle, those two strings on top. I'm going to yarn over, pull it through one, pull it through twice. Then pretty easy to start finding these holes in between the posts. I'm going to go in between that post and the whole stitch is on top of my hook. Single crochet. And one, two, in between the posts, single crochet in one, two, and one, two. And I use my index finger on my um, dominant hand as I go through the stitches. As I come through, I sometimes pull it down the hook a little bit. So if you're losing stitches off the end of your hook, um, try. By using that index finger to pull the stitches down. Awesome. So we've made a nice little two rows of single crochet. So we're going to turn our work again and this time we're going to increase. Because we started with six stitches, we're going to increase by six stitches every um, row. And this is what we're going to be doing when we're working in the round. So this is just practice. So flip your work, Make sure your yarn, your working yarn is behind your hook. Chain one. And we're going to go ahead in that first stitch. You're going to single crochet just like you did in that last one. After you've done one, instead of moving on to the next stitch, you're going to go back in that same hole and do two single crochets in each. So as we're doing this, we'll do that all the way across. We're increasing the number of stitches on our work by six. So we should end up with 12 stitches. And two. That last stitch is sometimes hard to find. We got it. One, two. So you can see now that we have 12 stitches on top of our work, you can see that the work, if we lay it out flat, has increased. And so what that is, is the bottom of our barnacle is going to have those increases on each row to get bigger to create that base. Awesome. So we're going to now decrease back to six stitches. So I'm going to show you the increase. And um, the decrease is how we go from this big white circle back to this opening here. So how we decrease the amount of stitches to close our barnacle up. So let's go ahead and turn your work, flip it over, make sure this, the working yarn is behind. I get a little bit more yarn out there. We're going to chain one, find that first stitch, and you're going to go in like you're doing a single crochet. This is our decrease. We're going to pull one loop, but instead of pulling 
yarning over and pulling through two. We're gonna go through that next stitch also and do another single crochet. And then we're gonna pull the loop through all three. So you can see that created one stitch out of two stitches from the last row. You can see that one stitch. So again, we're gonna go through one and then the next one. And then we're gonna pull through all three. Pull through one and then the next one and all three. And that is a decrease. We're taking one stitch, joining it with that next stitch. Two we're gonna do here. Oh, and I'm all done. So I should have six stitches here. Two, three, four, five, six. So, and that's your decrease. So you'll notice you have made this little arrow now because we went up and then we decreased again. And again, that's how we get, you can kind of see that shape that happens here on the side of the barnacle where we increase and then we decrease. So now that we've mastered those increases and decreases, we are going to move on to crocheting in the round and begin our barnacle. We'll go ahead and make your loop. Oh. Do you wanna trim your tail on this one? Cause that could get in the way. We're gonna stick the hook through the loop. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and chain three. Go one, two, three. And then we're gonna hook into the bottom. So we've got our chain of three. We're gonna hook into the bottom of that. Just hook over one little loop there. And we are going to do a slip stitch. So you'll yarn over, you'll slip through that first loop and then slip through the second. Only one yarn over for a slip stitch. And then you've created this nice little circle. We're gonna just kind of stretch out that circle and find the center. There it is, so right there. All right, so that's what we're gonna be going into. We're gonna start, cause we've started a new round, just like starting a new row, we're gonna create a chain one. And then take your bobby pin and mark that chain so you know where your round has begun. We're then gonna stick our hook into the middle of that circle front to back, just like you did when, with the stitches. Yarn over, pull through, and then we'll do another single crochet. That's one. We'll go two, we're gonna do six of them. Three, four, five, and six. And now we have reached the end of our round, so we're gonna slip stitch. So find your bobby pin. This is really useful because you can just lift it up. You're gonna stick your hook behind there. You can slide the bobby pin off now that your hook's in there and you know where it is. And you're just gonna slip stitch. So you slip through that first loop. Oops, I'm getting caught a little bit. What happens when your stitches are too tight and then slip through that second loop. So now you can see you're getting this cute little, cute little circle, cute little donut. We're gonna do our second round and this time we're gonna increase by two, just like we practiced. So two single crochets in each stitch. We start with a single chain stitch. And that's gonna count here. We're gonna go in, we're gonna go one and that chain right there counts as two. So now we're gonna go on the next one. We're gonna go one and two. 
Now we're gonna find that next stitch. And again, this is just like we practiced. We're gonna go in the hole between the posts. So you should have the full triangle stitch on top of your hook. And we'll go one and two single crochets in there. Next one, one and two. All the way around. We should end this round with 12 stitches. As I mentioned before, this is like a free form <laughs> crochet that we're doing right now. So um, we'll do these first through few rounds um, pretty prescribed. And then um, you can just kind of use your intuition, use your, um, what you feel looks right and um, as you shape your barnacle. So I've done two in that last one and then I'm gonna find the post. So just lift up your bobby pin, stick your hook in where that bobby pin was and flip through both. There we go, we got our first round. So now this next round, we're gonna increase by six. We're gonna start again with a chain one. Mark that with our bobby pin. And we're gonna start with a single crochet. And then the next stitch, we're gonna go two. One, two. And then we'll go just one single crochet. And then we're gonna do an increase one. Increasing by one. Two single crochets in the next stitch. So we're gonna go in the next stitch, we're gonna do just one. We'll go to the next stitch and we're gonna do two in this one and just follow that pattern all the way around. One. And two. And this ensures that the bottom of our barnacle will lie flat by increasing by six each time we go around. It keeps it from puckering up. And again, if you make a mistake, if you don't decrease in a perfect or increase in a perfect pattern, it's okay. This is free form. Crochet, so just pick it back up. It does not need to be perfect. We are not following a prescribed pattern. We are creating shapes as we go. Well, I maybe made some mistakes in that <laughs> round and that's okay. And then again, you'll find your bobby pin, just stretch it up a little bit. Go in there and you'll slip and slip. And ready to start another round. So you're getting a really nice um, flat bottom of your barnacle. Here we go. Single. And then we're gonna go, we're gonna do one single crochet and two single crochets. And on the third one this time, we're gonna do an increase. So this is kind of the pattern that you'll follow. Just add one single crochet in between the increases every time you go around. So we started out with double crochet increase or single crochet increase in every stitch, and then we did it in every other stitch, and we did it in every third stitch, and now we're doing it every fourth stitch. The next round, we could do it every fifth stitch. So I encourage you to just keep going with your pattern. Oh, 
All right. So once you get the bottom of your barnacle as big as you want your barnacle to be, um, you'll finish that those increases. We're going to go and we're going to do four rows of single crochet. So I'll show you how to do that. You're going to make your chain stitch. And you don't have to keep marking this. Um, I think it's helpful if you're just starting out, if you're kind of a beginner crocheter. Um, it's helpful to know where to start and stop. But um, again, these are free form crocheting, so you don't really have to um, be so precise. So we're just going to go around the single crochet. We're going to do four rows of that. I'm at a join in my yarn here. Using recycled yarn, so <laughs> there's a little join there. Whoops. So going all the way around. And what we're doing here as we're going around with this single crochet is we're building up the side. So you'll notice that your work is going to start to take this cup shape, which is great. That's just what we want to be happening. So I'll pause for a second and show you that what we are creating right now is this part of the barnacle. So your increases are here. And then this little edge here, the side of the barnacle, is where we're going to have those single crochets where we don't increase or decrease. So we'll go ahead and do four rounds of those, again, going in the posts, all the way around. Finish this one round with you, and then we'll do our video magic and pause until it's time to decrease. Okay, keep going around. And these barnacles are actually modeled off of the acorn barnacle, which is the largest, um, the giant acorn barnacle, which is the largest barnacle in the world. And it is um, native here to the Pacific Northwest can see how, uh, if you Google them, you can see how large um, those acorn barnacles are. And barnacles are really interesting animals. So I've completed the four rounds of single crochet. You can see I'm getting this nice cup-like structure. So now we're going to begin our decreases and we're going to continue decreasing until um, we get kind of this shape of the barnacle that we like. And you can decrease the quicker you decrease, the more rounded your barnacle will be like this. So this one I decreased every row until I was finished. This one is a little bit more of a volcano shape, which is, um, I think looks a lot like a lot of the barnacles I see out here. And so what I did here is I would decrease and then do a row of single crochet like I did here and then continue to decrease. So one round of decrease, one round of single crochet, one round of decrease, one round of single crochet. So I will let you kind of choose your own adventure there, but I'm going to show you um, kind of what my decreasing pattern looks like. I'm just going to kind of reverse engineer what I did for the increases. So I went ahead, I'm going to chain one, mark it, and then I am going to single crochet one, two, three, and four. And then on my fifth one, I'm going to chain those two together and join those two together. So I'm going to decrease, loop, loop, and then go through all three. I'm going to do four singles, one, two, three, four, and I'm going to go through one, two, three, 
two. All three. I'm going to continue that pattern all the way around. Three. And four. And then I'm going to decrease. One. Two. Just pull my yarn up a little bit and go all the way through. So I'm going to continue that pattern around for this round. And then the next round, I'll go three single and then decrease, three single and then decrease. So decrease every third. Then I'll decrease every two, then decrease every other one. So I'm going to spare you watching me <laughs> do those rounds. I go ahead and pause my recording and I'll come back when I do the last two decreases. All right, so we're down to our last row of decreases. I'm just going to decrease every stitch. So go ahead and chain one. Mark your stitch. I'm just going to decrease every stitch. We finish up our barnacle. All the way around, picking up one, two, through, and um, the barnacle that we're making is a pretty big size. We'll show you when we're done. Um, you don't have to make them this big. You also could make them bigger, <laughs> um, but you can make them smaller as well. You'll notice, like if you look at pictures of barnacles on Google. Um, or even just go see them <laughs> in real life. There's uh, varying sizes. And so we want to kind of replicate that in this installation as well. So as you get more and more comfortable with these increases and decreases and the idea of free, oh, you can get in the way, um, a free form crochet and kind of feeling out. <laughs> how you want to shape your own barnacle. Um, you can play with the size. So a smaller barnacle would have less increases before you start with those uh, rows of single crochet. Right. So we've got a nice ending here. We're going to just do one row of single crochet. You could do a couple rows if you wanted it more volcano shaped. Just one is sufficient for today. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Chain stitch, mark it. And single crochet all the way around. One single crochet in each stitch, each gap. There. Two more stitches. All right, and then I'm going to join my last stitch. Okay. And I'm going to slip stitch. I'm going to grab my scissors. I'm going to cut my extra yarn. I'm going to pull that all the way through, pull it pretty tight, open up top of that barnacle. And then 
I'm just gonna weave that end in. So I wanna take it inside the barnacle. So I'm gonna put my hook inside the barnacle and I'm gonna pull the tail in and come from the outside. Just weaving it in and out. Do one final in and I'm kind of pull it a little bit tight. Snip it. Snip off all your extra yarn. And there you have it. A barnacle. <laughs> and you can um, do something called blocking to shape it. Um, so you can get the barnacle wet. You can fill it with like, a towel or some other absorbent material. And as it dries, it will take a shape. So I've got a couple different sizes of barnacles here in this color of yarn. I'm just kind of working my way through different skeins of yarn. So you can see I've got three different shapes. I followed the same basic idea, but they turned out in three different shapes. Um, this one I played with a chunkier yarn. And you can see it has a little bit more of a rigid structure um, and it's got a nice texture on it. So you can play with that. Um, these ones, to make the live barnacles, I stuffed them with a old felted sweater. So um, I will probably be doing that to some of the barnacles that get dropped off at Alma Mater for the outdoor exhibit. And then I have smaller ones, like this one's a bit smaller. Here it is. And then here's my little tiny baby one. <laughs> and for this one, I just, um, I did the one round of increases. The one round of increases, one single crochet, and then one round of decreases. And it's really small, but I think it adds nice variation as they um, come together to have varying um, sizes. So, I hope that you will join me in making a few barnacles. Uh, just check out the instructions on um, where to drop them off or dropping them off at Alma Mater for the outdoor exhibit by May 30th. And then other ones you can just bring to the event to be included in the indoor installation. Thank you so much for crocheting with me today. I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day and happy creating.